It's a spectacular sight. The maiden journey of a mighty ship. But this is no cruise, there are no paying passengers and certainly no high seas. Before any of that, this colossal vessel has to navigate a difficult stretch of narrow, shallow river backwards to make it to the ocean. If the ship gets through this, her next journey, 25,000 kilometres to Australia, will be easy. It's a nerve-wracking test for the thousands who built and run the ship, especially Dean Bailey, who's in charge of getting this ship ready for the passengers. This is a big ship, but give me an idea of the size of the operation. So, at full capacity, we'll, we have, you know, almost 5,000 guests. So, 2,091 staterooms, 1,056 crew rooms, 18 different dining venues, um, pools, jacuzzis, you name it. So, it's, it's, there's, there's a few things going on. In other words, it's big. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is. Over the past 10 years, Australian cruise passenger numbers have grown more than sixfold. Incredibly, we love the love boats so much, we don't have enough space to fit them all in our ports. But that's not slowing down production in this enormous shed in Germany. Can they get any bigger? A little bit, yes, but, but not too much. The ships are getting bigger than the, the ports where they can berth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's a problem. <laughs> yeah, of course. Peter Hackman loves building ships. And at the Meyer Werft shipyard, keeping up with orders for giant cruise liners means he and his co-workers have never been busier. How long does it take to build one of these mighty cruise ships? In total, if we're talking about a new prototype, we, we, we do need uh, three years. It's like playing with giant blocks of Lego. Entire floors and compartments fit together to create the ship. When all of the sections, which have been completed separately, are finished and ready to go, this is where they come. Piece by piece, they begin building the ship. It is an unbelievable process, and the scale, just have a look at it. It is mind-boggling. These ships are marvels of engineering. Three mega vessels are underway in here right now. And floating outside is the shipyard's latest pride and joy. The Ovation of the Seas is a billion dollar baby just out of the nursery. Engineers and designers are still working on her. That moment when they finally sail, yeah. when you let go of your baby, so to speak, yeah. what's that like? Yeah, it's always a very emotional moment, of course. Mm. Uh, it's even for me now, I'm working here uh, for uh, more than 20 years and, and it's always uh, really, really an, an uh, amazing moment. Even floating silently in the early morning light, Ovation makes a lot of noise. She's the biggest ship they can make here, 18 decks high, 170,000 gross tons and 1,141 feet. 347 metres in length. But size matters. Her six and a half thousand passengers and crew demand plenty of space. You would know every inch of this ship right now, wouldn't you? I, I could always brag and say I know every inch. Of, I, I would say I know, uh, yeah, not every inch, but every space, yes. Captain Henrik Loy is the first to take command of the ship. He and her will soon be calling Australia home. Captain, this is an extraordinarily exciting time for you, I'd imagine. Nervous as well? It is. It's a, it's a, it's a good combination of, of uh, focus and uh, a little bit of nervousness, yes. Butterflies, if you like. But uh, it's something that I've, uh, I've always dreamt of. Today, I'm the first guest on board for her unique and vitally important maiden voyage. You see, the shipyard sits on that shallow, narrow canal a long way from the ocean. Further complicating this journey, the canals are an obstacle course of low bridges and tight locks. How are you going to get a ship of this size <laughs> out through that extremely small canal? 
Well, it seems like an impossible task yeah. when you look at it. Uh, it is a river which is pretty much this, uh, the, as wide as the ship, just that uh, you have a few feet there to spare. And it's not nearly deep enough. There's two windows of opportunity here. There's twice a month when you have either a full moon or a new moon. Today, it's a new moon, and that means the highest tides. Captain Loy's navigation skills are going to be tested. The, the instruments are so small. I mean, these tiny little joysticks here. <laughs> Yeah, with this thing here, you turn these enormous propellers 360 degrees. Right. So, so it's all hands-on, bow thrusters from that little lever so, so there. The so the propellers yeah. go full 360? Yes, we don't have rudders or shafts anymore. Right. He has to guide a 41-metre wide ship down a tiny canal. She draws about eight metres, leaving barely 30 centimetres from the bottom of the hull to the bottom of the canal. This really is a tight squeeze. There's barely an arm's length between the ship and the edge of the canal down there. Everything at this stage has to be so precise, which is why we're going so slowly. It's going to take about 20 hours to cover 55 kilometres. Technology means, enormous as she is, this ship doesn't need the use of tugboats when it's in port. Below the waterline, there are giant propellers at the front of the hull. They're called bow thrusters. They help steer the ship sideways at low speeds. A vessel this size is impossible to manoeuvre using rear propulsion only. When you think about the size again of the ship, that is just huge. And it, it, it'll spin around on the dime. And uh, you need to do that in these ports as you, as you come in or as you depart uh, to, to turn the ship around, to head back out to sea. Even as she makes her way, slowly but surely, to the sea, the ship is still being built into a small city. When she arrives in Australia, she'll be shipshape and three times bigger than Sydney's largest hotel. It's the biggest, it's the newest, it's the most technologically advanced ship ever to come to Australia. Adam Armstrong is Royal Caribbean's Asia Pacific chief. He says China's rapidly increasing cruising market has driven demand for bigger, modern vessels, and Australia benefits. The ships go to China for the northern summer, and they come to Australia for the southern summer. So we get the best ships in our region moving between north and south across the year. Such is the popularity of modern-day cruising, it's even become viable to bring a ghost ship back from the dead. In the 1950s and 60s, the SS United States was the original mega cruise ship. And now, the Crystal Cruise Company has signed an exclusive contract to see if this beautiful old lady is salvageable. They've already started inspecting the hull for seaworthiness. Where are we sitting now? We are in the first-class dining room of the SS United States, uh, the most famous ship that didn't sink. Susan Gibbs has a deep connection to this ship. Her grandfather, William, designed it. And for years, she's fought to conserve the United States with the dream of one day sailing again. As you walk along this promenade, you can see the peeling paint and the broken windows and a bit of rust here and there, but you can get a sense that it could easily be restored and sail again. Oh, absolutely. This is just cosmetic. She just <laughs> needs a little makeup. <laughs> a little a fair bit of makeup. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but her bones are strong. How is it possible to even consider refitting this ship and having her seaworthy again? I think there is an incredible market for what this ship represents. Is that a real prospect? It's a real prospect. I'm, I'm very hopeful that yeah. we can, we can uh, achieve this dream. Since the announcement that she may sail again, have people come forward saying, oh, I'm happy to pay, I'd love to come on board? There, there is a waiting list. Uh, there's been an extraordinary amount of interest already. In her day, there was nothing more luxurious or glamorous than the SS United States. 45 years after she last sailed, Crystal Cruises is, believe it or not, willing to spend $750 million restoring the ship 
hoping to take passengers back to the golden era. Is there still a romance associated with cruising the high seas? Uh, yes, absolutely. And if you ask me, there, there, there will always be, no matter what the ship looks like. Once you're out at sea, and, and you're in surrounded by the ocean and heading for some place, you cannot help but be, be, feel that romance. Do you take time out? Do you, do you step away from the bridge and lean on the railings and look Oh, out? yes. <laughs> I do, I do. Oh, it's healing. It's, it's, uh, it just, it just that connection, it, it just gives you a sense of peace. And, and uh, for me, at least, to me, it's just in one of the most valuable things. This year, nine new ships will launch worldwide to cater for an estimated 24 million passengers. It's a mega business that demands mega ships, proudly built on a golden era of cruising. My grandfather, he had one toast that he would always say at any occasion, which is, to everything you want, doubled, to good health, and to the big ship. Hello, I'm Tara Brown. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.